Anyone can write a book. Yep, anyone. Okay. Maybe not anyone, but a lot of people, but not for the reasons you think. I'm not here to try and encourage everyone to write a book because if you just try your hand, you might like it. It's a long and hard, hard, hard process that I don't recommend to everyone, but I think it can be a little bit scary from the jump because a lot of people might think like, my vocabulary isn't big enough. I could never come up with the amazing visual descriptions that all of the best authors do. I can't write great philosophical ponderings of the classics. There are a million reasons you could convince yourself that you are not fit to write a book. And you could be right, but today I want to talk about why you probably are wrong. And the interesting example that I want to bring up is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, the book that somehow landed itself a Steven Spielberg directed film. Now the critical reception of this book is all over the place. And that's why it's important to bring up because the most interesting thing that this book does is it writes to a market. And that's why I want to talk about it today. Ready Player One is the best example I can think of of an author that is quite frankly, incredibly weak in the writing department. Yet Ernest Klein somehow managed to put his finger to the pulse of a market that was eager for the content that he put out. And I think it demonstrates how it's not always about how good you are at writing the words on the page, how beautiful they are, how eloquent you are. In the end, when you are publishing a book, you will have an editor, you will have people, if you are going through a traditional publishing route, you will have people that will help you get your story and your prose to the place that it needs to be. Now, obviously there are varying degrees of how much help you'll need versus how much help you'll get, but you can make anything out of a decent story. You can turn a decent story into a great story. You can work with a story. The most important thing is to finish your novel, to get it written and to work hard to get it out or into an agent or publisher's hands, whoever it needs to be. There may be some nerds in the comments that will dislike my take on the book, Ready Player One, but the truth of the matter seems to be across the board that Ready Player One is a very, very poorly written book. But I'm not making this video to bash Ernest Cline or to review the book. It just seems to be a common opinion, one that I happen to hold, that the book is very very, very subpar in the pros and the story category. It's it's very tropey, it's very predictable. It's got a lot of things in it that make you roll your eyes. It frequently feels like the book could have been written by a 13 year old boy. But the thing that Ernest Cline did that was so important and allowed the book to skyrocket into the stratosphere was that he wrote to a market. But when I say write to a market, I don't just mean choose science fiction or fantasy or urban fantasy, or portal fantasy, or whatever genre, literary, crime, thriller, whatever genre that you're thinking, I don't just mean picking a genre. I mean writing directly to a group of people that will resonate with your work. I think some other good examples of this are books like The Hunger Games, uh, Harry Potter, Twilight. Twilight in particular is a great example of what is widely considered to be very, very low level writing, skyrocketing into the stratosphere, specifically because the book resonated with a fan base. That frequently happens when the book is geared towards a fan base that is incredibly young. In the case of Ernest Cline and Ready Player One, he took something that not many people expected, as well as not many people had probably even known that they wanted. And what he did was he drilled down to the core on 80s pop culture references. It sounds simple, it sounds like a gimmick, and quite frankly it is a gimmick but people love it. The book is filled to the brim with references to pop culture throughout the 80s. There is a reference of every single popular movie that came about during the 80s. Whatever it was, the book is centered around nostalgia. And there were a lot of people that were hungry for that nostalgia. Now you can judge the quality of the book. You can even judge its readers as I've seen a lot of people do. But what's important is that Ernest Cline, whether he knew it or not, he picked an audience and found one that really was starving for the work that he put out. And that meant that it wasn't, the most important part of his book wasn't the quality of the prose, or the twists and the turns or the character building, because quite frankly, there's not a lot of that in the book. And that is a criticism. I do think that brings the book down for me. And I don't think the book ever deserves a place in any hall of fame. And I think it's evident by how poorly the rest of Ernest Cline's books have done that this was a gimmick and a crutch. And when he moved away from that, things fell apart 
pretty quickly. Because the evident truth, in my opinion, seems to be that Ernest Klein is not a great writer, but he did have a great idea, and that's what I really want to drill home here. When I talk about writing to markets, it's all about drilling down to the core on your idea. It's not always about your vocabulary or your prose or your eloquence. It's not always about your verbal skills. Now, obviously, if you're writing a book, you're going to want your book to have all of those other things. You want it to check all of the boxes on the list. But what Ernest Klein proves is that he checked the most important one, and he was able to skirt by on all the others because of that. What sells a book is finding the niche that it belongs to and pitching it to those readers in a way that they understand and enjoy. Simply put, Reaching down to the heart of readers is exactly what they want. They want to be moved. They want to be touched. Huh. Not like that. Like, obviously not in a weird way. Not weird at all. Okay, anyway. Pulling at your reader's heartstrings is the most important part of just about any book. Now, obviously, there are going to be exceptions in different genres and with different writers, but we're generalizing here. You need to move people with your book. And in Ernest Cline's case, he moved people to remember the 80s, to feel like they were living through a time or experiencing a time that maybe they didn't live through to begin with. If getting a bunch of 40 year old dudes to nerdgasm over their childhoods was what Ernest Klein had to do to make a giant bestseller book that gets turned into a millions of millions of millions of dollar movie that gets directed by Steven Spielberg, why would you not do that? Obviously you want to work hard to make your book the best that it can be, but I'm just trying to make a point clear. I'm not saying that it's okay that Ready Play Player One is a very poorly written book across the board. I'm saying if you're publishing a book and you need to get one out of the three or five things right that every book needs, Ernest Cline got the one right and that was able to carry him across the charts. There are plenty of writers that get the prose right. They have great prose, they, they, they have beautiful writing, but the book doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere because it doesn't reach the readers. And the most important thing is always going to be to reach the readers. When you get a book sold to a publisher, or if you're self-publishing, an editor can make your prose cleaner and your story tighter. But all you need for a successful book is the right idea. Pick your market carefully and write that book to them. Does any of this make sense? That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for future content like this, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.